Alright, in this video I want to just uh, briefly introduce the concept of simple harmonic motion and I'll do it with a, uh, a spring and a mass. So let's say that I have a ceiling and uh, attached to the ceiling is a spring and on the end of the spring is a object of some mass M and it's just hanging there so it's uh, in its neutral position and then I come along and I tug on the mass and I stretch this spring out So the neutral position is still at this point and I've displaced this mass by a distance x. So now in the spring there's going to be a tensile force that wants to restore the mass back to its neutral position. and I'll uh, denote this force with uh, this turquoise, turquoise colored arrow and this force is equal to the uh, negative of the spring constant K times the displacement so it's, it's, it's directly proportional to the displacement X and this uh, constant K is a property of the spring and this uh, equation here is known as Hooke's law and uh, we need this negative because uh, it means that the force is always in the opposite direction of the displacement. So if I was to compress the spring, the uh, arrow is going to point downwards. And if I was to stretch the spring, the arrow will be pointing upwards towards. The, the force is always going to be in the direction opposite this displacement and towards the neutral position. And of course, According to Newton's second law, this force is going to generate an acceleration of the object. So the acceleration is, we can say, will be towards the neutral position as well. And the acceleration is also proportional to the displacement since uh, the mass is a constant. So assuming that we have this inside of a vacuum and there's no friction due to air resistance and there's no other sort of mechanical losses of energy in the system. So picture my little vacuum with a dotted uh, border. What's going to happen when I let go of this mass in this position is that it's going to oscillate indefinitely forever and ever. So it'll move toward the neutral position and it'll overshoot. To the same amount and then it will come back and then it will overshoot again by X and it will do this forever and ever and ever simply because the restoring force or the direction of acceleration is always uh, in the opposite direction and proportional to the displacement and this concept is what we call simple harmonic motion and another way to look at this is that energy is being perfectly converted from one form to the other so in the initial position the spring has some potential energy and when it's released it turns all of that uh, potential energy into kinetic energy which then turns back into potential energy when the mass reaches this point then it gets converted back into kinetic energy but we'll look at energy methods in future videos Right now let's concentrate on this equation, this negative kx is equal to ma, which is called the equation of motion for this system. So it's called the equation of motion. And I'm going to write it like this. And I'm going to write it like this, the mass t 
times the second derivative of the displacement with respect to time, so this term is equal to the acceleration, is equal to negative kx. And so this implies that m times the second derivative of the displacement with respect to time plus kx is equal to zero. And this is a second order linear differential equation which has the following solution. So I won't go and deride the solution for now, but the solution to this equation is that the displacement as a function of time is equal to the constant A times the cosine of the Greek letter omega times T minus the Greek letter phi. So A denotes the uh, amplitude or the maximum displacement. Omega is equal to the square root of the spring constant divided by the mass and uh, it's also equal to the angular velocity which is related to the uh, frequency. And phi is the phase of the motion. These two terms can be found through applying the initial conditions and this term here is a property of the system. Alright, since I know that the displacement at any point in time is equal to this, I can also work out the uh, velocity. So velocity is simply the first derivative of the displacement with respect to time. And so we have here A, the constant remains, cosine differentiates to negative sine, so I'll put the negative out the front, times sine of omega t minus phi, and applying the chain rule to here, I have to times this by omega, so I get negative a omega sine of omega t minus phi. So if I was to square this velocity, I would get a squared times omega squared times sine squared of omega t minus phi. And the sine squared can be rewritten as 1 minus cos squared omega t minus phi. And then if I expand this A into the brackets, I shall get omega squared outside of A minus A squared cos squared of omega t minus phi. And we can see that this term is equal to the displacement squared. So I can write v squared is equal to omega squared outside of a squared, sorry this should be squared, minus x squared. So let's do an example. A particle is moving in simple harmonic motion with displacement x. Its velocity v is given by v squared is equal to 16 outside of 9 minus x squared what is the amplitude A and the period T of the motion. Okay, so we derive that uh, V squared is equal to omega squared outside of A squared minus X squared. And I'll call this form of the equation the angular velocity amplitude squared form. I'm not sure if there is actually a technical term for it, but uh, that's what I'll call it. And of course that correlates to our given equation 16 outside of 9 minus x squared. Okay, so we know that uh, the angular velocity squared is equal to 16, which implies that then the angular velocity is equal to 4. And the units are radians uh, per second. 
and to get a frequency, frequency is in just in uh, per second or in hertz. So um, the angular velocity is also given in terms of frequency as two pi f. So that implies that f is equal to omega divided by two pi, and the period t is equal to one divided by the frequency f and this is simply equal to the reciprocal of this so it'll be 2 pi divided by omega so the period of the motion is 2 pi divided by 4 which equals pi on 2 so that is the period of the motion now for the amplitude we have a squared is equal to 9 so that implies then that the amplitude of the motion is equal to 3 and to be proper we should always say it's units and this unit uh, can be centimeters or meters but we're not given it so we'll just use the word units and to be consistent on our theme of units the period is typically measured in seconds so this was just an introductory video on simple harmonic motion we shall cover this topic in more detail in future videos, but in the meantime, if this video has been helpful, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And best of luck with your math studies, and I'll see you on the next video.